It's October 2024. It's crazy out there, but you want to know what's even crazier? Our wine sale. 25% off all wines all month long. It's black case. Okay, Bacchus, it's great to be with you again. We've got six new wines from all over the world. Very exciting wines. There's an autumnal flair to it in a way. Um, and I just really kind of want to appreciate the moment. Let's get started. So we're going to start off in Slovenia, right along the Italian, Italian Slovenian border. There's this amazing river valley. And in that river valley, Tokai or Tokai Friulano has grown for hundreds and hundreds of years. They now just call it Tokai because the EU said, well now it's called Friulano because the EU said, Tokai kind of belongs to Hungary, lay out. And so they really had to. Anyways, but a crafty little way, and I'll get to this in a second, that this particular producer has played with uh, Friulano. That's what they do is they, it's Blazic by the way. Blazic is a winemaker that's new to the marketplace, really lovely, totally clean, expressive uh, white wines with a little, little, little tiny bit of skin contact, five, five days. But the best way to think about Friulano and a lot of the wines from, you know, from Friuli and the Coldio, um, that, that, that amazing Italian wine region that's right along the border with Slovenia, is that they have these a little more texture to them, a little more weight, a little spice to them. And as we get into the fall, we kind of want that. We kind of like, for me, it's not like I'm done with like those really crisp, racy white wines that we kind of just like, you know, really kind of get after in the summer, summer months. Um, but I kind of like wines that have a little, white wines that have a little more kind of substance. And that's kind of the direction we're heading here. So anyways, <clears throat> they make about 160 cases of this very, very small production. Um, all organic, all the way through the whole process. Um, unfined, unfiltered as well. Just really, really lovely winemaking from, I think arguably one of the great, great white wine regions in all of Europe, which is that Italian Slovenian borderland right there. So, okay, moving on. We're going to Maxford, Rick, uh, Maxford Richter. And Richter uh, is an estate that's been making wine since the 1700s. And we recently tasted with Dirk Richter uh, in August. And Dirk is the ninth generation grower uh, of a pretty amazing estate uh, in the middle Mosul around the town of Berncastle. And they have pretty amazing uh, old vines in the Gracker Domprost and the Gracker Himmelreich. This particular uh, uh, parcel comes from the Gracker Domprost uh, and they're 80 year old ungrafted vines on pure slate. So what that means to me, um, and I hope it's kind of easy for you to understand, is, is when you have a Riesling vine on its own Riesling rootstock that's 80 years old, just driving its way into this uh, 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 pure slate uh, uh, soils, uh, you have these really chiseled wines, especially when they're vinified bone dry. Um, so when they're dry and they're barrel aged, now you've got a little extra kind of air in that ferment. Like the wine is just awesome. It's from the 22 vintage, which is a little bit warmer, um, which gives the wine you know, maybe a little more fleshy qualities to it, which I really like because you want to know what? Ac the acid, the natural acid at certain Riesling sites is exceptionally high. So bright and kind of racy with a little bit of like fleshiness to it at the same time, but totally dry. Really, really great wine. Going to Amviv. Uh, and Amviv is a, uh, is a new project that we were working with. We've only had the wines in uh, the marketplace for a couple weeks. And female winemaker, I forget her name, I'm sorry if you're uh, ever gonna watch this, which uh, maybe you will, I don't know. Um, I will uh, remember that, but uh, anyways, uh, I was doing some research on this particular estate, and it's new, but they basically acquired some of the oldest vineyard lands in all of Santa Barbara that used to belong to, uh, or at least to be farmed by Bob Lundquist of Coupe. And Coupe, one of the founding uh, estates in Santa Barbara, like, you know, they, <laughs> They've been making great, great wine. So she's kind of shepherding some of those Rhone varieties um, into bottle, kind of with her own vision, which is really, really exciting. Um, this is a co-planted and co-fermented uh, Northern Rhone style white. So there's Viognier, Marsan, Roussan, and it's on, again, on fine unfiltered, but like it just has this like awesome aromatic. You can see in the glass, like there's just a lovely and beautiful color to it. There's a little tiny bit of, I wouldn't say cloudiness, but like you can tell that like, the wine has a lot of extract and kind of, uh, there's a lot going on there. So really lovely wine. So barrel fermented, um, but not oaky. 
It's important to remember that. Like, you can have a barrel fermented wine, white wine, that's not oaky. Um, and that's just really judicious use or smart use of, of, of aged uh, barrels. It's really just giving that wine more texture. I always come back to that, guys, and that's really important because, like, what makes a white wine great in a lot of ways, not only is like beautiful aromatics, persistent flavors, it's texture. So, uh, wines of texture, white wines. So, um, yeah, lovely wine. Uh, really excited about uh, learning about this producer. So, going to Mount Etna. Um, this is Eduardo Acosta, um, and Acosta is from the Canary Islands, and he was making wines with um, Ariana Ocupinti for a while. He was making these wines in that winery. I don't know what the story was there, but I think that there's kind of a backstory there, which that's really neither here nor there in a way, but um, <clears throat> anyways, the reason this doesn't say Mount Etna on there, even though it's grown on Mount Etna, is because he was making the wines in Vittoria, well, southeastern uh, Sicily. And, the Italians kind of like, you got to make the wines where you grow the wines or else you got to declassify and call it Terra Siciliana. And that's what he has continued to do. Um, in kind of that very Italian way of saying, you want to know what, you know, bureaucracy, like you can have all of your fancy labels. I will declassify my incredible wines uh, to the lowest possible, like Terra Siciliana, um, and just kind of move on with my day and, and watch you all kind of like clamor over like these really special, special uh, bottlings. So, and that's kind of what we're seeing here. It's imported through Louis Dresner, like one of our really, really important um, uh, import partners for uh, like very organic French and Italian wines. Um, really lovely new wine for us from, uh, from Mount Etna and Sicily. So really great white wines too, by the way, which we also carry. So going to uh, you know, kind of the Ford family and their Illahi, uh, Illahi project they have really really lovely vineyards both in the Lanet Valley but primarily in the gorge the Columbia River Valley Gorge and the Dalles um, kind of like upstream from uh, you know, in the gorge and they have an estate vineyard there but they also farm on the Washington side in the Waluke Slope and that's where this particular Grenache comes from so 2022 Grenache from the uh, uh, Matwa vineyard all concrete um, uh, I'm sorry concrete and barrel aged all native ferments with a little bit of whole cluster um, as well. And whole cluster, kind of just pausing here for a second, is a bit of like a secret sauce ingredient for uh, for winemakers. Some people love it and swear by it, others don't. I generally like it, <clears throat> especially with Syrah, um, because I like having a little bit of kind of edge to the wine texturally. It kind of brings up this, this this brambly, woodsy kind of quality to the wines in a way, um, you know. But if you're not, if you don't know what you're doing, <clears throat> the wines can kind of run away from you. But anyways, I kind of I digress. But like really, really lovely Grenache right here, classic in a way. Like it's got great spice to it. You can see through it. it kind of looks like a like the darker colored Pinot Noir, but it's not a heavy wine. Grenache is not a heavy grape. It can carry alcohol and carry texture, but like it's not a big tannic beast of wine, you know, it's like really, really love the uh, elegant Grenache right here from Washington State from a really nice family that we've kind of gotten to know a little bit, you know, when Bethany was here doing a tasting, it was really nice to be able to talk to her about what's going on in Oregon and what's going on in the gorge. So moving all the way to uh, Sutherland, and Sutherland is um, kind of the, uh, the second project of a really famous winemaker in South Africa, Giles Webb, and Giles was the... Uh, uh, the winemaker of uh, Telema, Telema uh, Vineyards uh, in Stellenbosch, kind of an iconic estate there that we have also worked with in the past. <clears throat> but this is their cool climate operation. So they are about six, seven miles off the Atlantic coast. And the resulting wines are really lovely. Like there's higher acid to this Cabernet. It's refreshing, it's at 14%, so it's not like a lightweight cab. Um, you know, it's not like some of these old school Bordeaux that are 12 and a half, 13 percent. Like it's got weights to it, but there's just finesse and energy and, and bright fruit to it. Um, 18 months in uh, in Barrique, um, but I feel that the Barrique probably is maybe a, a combination of, of new and used, maybe primarily used or maybe a couple years old. And then the Cabernet kind of does all the talking. So, anyways, um, I was just really pleased. I tasted this on Monday morning, and right away I was like, damn, like that. That's a really, really good Cabernet, and I don't, we don't, feature as many Cabernets in this uh, in this uh, feature, um, and for kind of a couple different reasons. Like I, 
oftentimes some of the calves will be really excited about like are outside of price points or maybe some of the calves we're tasting are kind of heavy and maybe overdone in a way. And to find one that's just like presented in this style is really, really nice. So bright, elegant, exciting, but with the concentration of power that Cabernet kind of deserves to tell its own story. So that's October. Um, you know, we got this wine sale going. It gets pretty hectic around here, Nick Thomas. Um, hang in there. Um, but come visit us. It's the absolute, absolute best sale in town. And, uh, and we'll see you guys throughout the month. You can pick this up starting this weekend. It's about 150 bucks uh, for tax. And just to, you know, with that discount involved, but just really, really great uh, uh, value. So we'll see you soon.